Hey, what's going on guys? It's Reiner Darwin Design here. Welcome back to another video. Uh, in today's video, I'm be teaching you guys how to make sports edits in Photoshop. Um, I did a tutorial like this a while ago, but it's been a minute, so I figured I'd do another one. So this is the final product, uh, it's just a picture of Jonathan Taylor, and then this is the original image. So I'm just gonna be showing you how I transformed uh, this into this. And then I'm also have the PSD for this in the description down below. So um, you can play with it yourself if you want to, but I'm gonna just be doing a layer breakdown for time's sake and I'll try to explain everything as quickly as possible. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm gonna start off with just the base layer. So um, all the way down here. So off rip, I wanted to throw some camera raw on it. So it's a little bit brighter because you can see JT is pretty dark. So uh, I'm gonna copy this and then go to filter camera raw filter. I'm gonna up the exposure some. Basically, I'm just trying to make his front side more visible. So anything that'll help me doing that here um, I'm gonna go ahead and do so just these are the similar settings I use but you can play with it um, obviously every picture is gonna be different so you might not even have to do this but uh, you can if you want to just up the brightness or play with some settings a little bit so once you get some settings you like I'm gonna just lower the opacity on that and then you can copy these two layers and I'm gonna throw a skin on it so I'm gonna use topaz for the skin topaz is free and I'm gonna have a link to it in the description if you want to get it um, it's topaz adjust the legacy version is what I use you can just get a free trial with your email and it's really easy to install in Photoshop. So once you get that, um, you can start working on the skin. I'm going to use stylized collection and vivacious under finishing touches. You can set the transparency. So I'm going to be pretty generous with the transparency, like more than normal. Um, cause with these edits, you really want the skin to pop. That's kind of everything. So I'm gonna throw some vivacious, some psychedelic, and then obviously you can check all these settings and play with it yourself. Uh, a good skin is how you can kind of separate yourself from other designers. So these are just my kind of go-to settings. You can follow along and then when you're done, you can press OK. But if you want to keep going, press apply. But I'm finished here, so I'm going to go ahead and press OK. And you can see the difference that makes like it's just it kind of makes it pop a little bit. So once you have that, I'm going to name my layer uh, skin and I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit. So uh, now that we have that we are good to go here. I'm gonna throw a little blur on it. So merge the group and then go to filter blur motion blur. And I'm gonna put it between like 10 and 20. I'll put it like 15. So that's good for me. Uh, name your layer blur. And then I'm gonna copy this regular skin or this uh, base skin group, bring it over the top. And this is gonna be my mask. So I'm gonna merge it. And then go to select subjects. I think this is the quickest way to mask an image, um, but it's not always perfect. Like you can see, it's kind of rough around the edges. Didn't really get everything. So you can take like that lasso tool to clean it up. Um, this here is to add to a selection, these two squares, and then these are to take away. So you can see that adds to it and then this will subtract. So you can use that to help clean it up a little bit. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll be right back. and that should be good for me so it's pretty rough around the edges still um if you could and had the time to i'm just doing this for time's sake but i would definitely recommend going like pen tool or something else more precise but uh this is just the quickest or you can use quick selection whatever there's a bunch of different ways but um you want to get your selection as precise as possible so once you do that you want to click the layer mask and then you can convert it to a smart object i'm gonna name it and then put it in a mask group and I can now delete this and you'll see that basically it's over the top of the blurred layer. So you can see the background now, but it doesn't affect uh, the foreground. So uh, then this is pretty simple. These are just the effects in the background. So there's just a grunge texture on overlay with lower opacity, a black and white adjustment um, so it can add more color easily. And then this is just a striped effect on soft light and a blue uh, layer fill just to get some color in there. So. That's the background. Next up is overlays. So with the overlays, I'm going to start off with actually a blur group. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is select these bottom three, the blur in the skin and merge them and bring them over the top. So for this, I'm going to make it black and white. And I wanted to use this to split up the uh, blue. So the blue wasn't so dominant and it brought in some some black and white and some white colors in there. So 
Um, so yeah, basically I just made a layer mask with it. I inverted it and then I used that to just brush it in with a feathered brush. You'll see kind of how it shows up. So, uh, you could just kind of brush it in like so until you get a good mixture of colors that you like. So that's just a rough example, but that's basically what I did for this here. You can see, um, just to add some whites in there. The next up was the hexagon layer. So this is the base effect. Uh, this is what it looks like. And then I just basically put this on a bunch of different blend modes. So I have soft light uh, screen to get darker or brighter. And then this is more darker. And then I have it on lighten as well, just for a little touch up. Got some half tones in here too. Very subtle, but they're there just to add a little something. Uh, and then that's really the main composition for the most part. Next up is the color correction where it kind of really all comes together. You can see. So I'll walk you through this. Um, first up is selective color. So this is in your adjustment panel right here. And you can use this to get colors to appear how you want them to. So you can play with the tones and stuff like that and, uh, and kind of choose how you want them to show up. So that's selective color play with that. Every image is going to look different. This is a photo lookup or color lookup. Sorry. So come in here and then I actually bought this from a pack, but there's going to be a lot in here that you can also look at as well. So play with those. Uh, I put it on lower opacity and then this is just bumping up. I wanted to get some more brights in here or some lights rather. So I got a levels group in my adjustment panel and you can drag this to the left. You can see it ups the lights and you can move this here for the midter tones and then this is the darker tone. So you can play with these to kind of get certain levels to either pop or you can get a darker, lighter, whatever but I used it to make it lighter. I added some saturation and another selective color. And that was like my base color correction. So next was the camera raw groups. Uh, this is kind of where it really took it up a notch. So for this, I just copied these two, merged it. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this and, and I'm going to create just a base layer. I can copy off this instead of having to keep into duplicate these two. So I'm gonna open this. So step one, I just did camera raw again. So that's all I did there. And then um, I'll show you where I get these lookups from. So I copy these two every time you're just pulling and eventually, I mean, you could copy the group as well, but copy and then merge. And then you're just gonna keep building off of it. So I go to filter camera raw filter. And to get these settings here, like vintage instant stuff like that, it's under these presets. So it's this one here. And then you could see right here under creative, you could see there's a bunch of different ways your photo can be manipulated. So, uh, this is the vintage instant I use. This is the cool light. Um, the bright was under color. So you can see bright here and then FT seven was futuristic. So like that. And then PMO five was under medium skin. But basically I just kind of go through all those presets and see if I think there's anything I could pull from any of them. Um, you can just use a layer mask so it doesn't have to affect the whole image, even if it's just a part like for this one, it was more the edges, you could lower the opacity. And then I put this one on soft light, cool light, bright, um, the futuristic one, and then the medium skin one just to get some dark around the edges. So you can see that really makes it pop though. Like it transforms the whole thing. Once I had that done, I used another selective group, selective color adjustment to, uh, to get the colors how I wanted them. And then I added one last final thing. So I took all this, copied it, made it uh, one layer. So I merged it and then control shift B, make it and then make it black and white. And I blurred it again, filter motion blur. And then I put it on screen. And I just did this to get some lights and some more motion back in the design. So I'm going to create another layer mask, control I to invert it. And then you can just brush it in with a feathered brush, a uh, feathered brush, meaning it's set to hardness, zero uh, percent. So it's kind of just softer on the edges just to get a little motion and light back in at the very finishing touches. You could also play with the brush opacity so it's not so strong. Uh, just kind of like that, just adding a couple touch ups and then lessen the opacity of the layer. And that's good with me and you're done. So I went from this to this relatively quickly. So that's pretty much all I got for today's video. I uh, appreciate you guys for tuning in. If you have any questions or anything, you can leave them down below or hit me on my socials that are always in the description. 
Uh, I'm gonna have a link to the PSD and Topaz below as well, so you can download those and um, and use them if if you want to. So I hope you guys find this helpful, and uh, I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace out.